you know, 2008, the financial crisis, uh, Brexit, COVID, you know, IT across our industry, but you know, across the broader economy has always played a positive part in the solution to, to overcoming yeah. challenges that organizations have had. But so this Bradford boy that joined CCS Media, what yeah. was his ambitions when he joined the company? Did you, you know, did you think you'd end up as MD? No, uh, I probably wasn't thinking about, you know, being an MD. Um, I was thinking about earning as much money as fast as I could. I don't like reflecting too much because I, I think it, it kind of makes you feel like you're a bit, you know, complacent or, or, or satisfied. I'm definitely not satisfied with, with where we are uh, or where I am. Welcome to the Channel Chat Podcast. Hello, I'm Mark Sumner, host of the Channel Chat Podcast Show, and today I have the privilege of James Hardy, the MD of CCS Media in the house, or in the Mark. studio. How are we doing, James? Yeah, great, thank you. Good to see you, Mark, in yeah. person. It's yeah. great to be here. Thanks for coming in, thanks for coming in. Um, James, I'm gonna go straight into it because recently, well, I say recently, it's two years ago now, um, in August uh, 2019, before COVID happened, you were announced as MD um, of CCS Media, so you've had a pretty, successful journey in that company and i want to sort of give the listeners a bit of a flavor of how you started off because you started as a, an account manager not, not quite an apprentice but as, a, as a, an account manager in sales trying to build a book of business so give me a give me an idea about the career you started well um two years does actually feel like a lifetime ago mm -hmm. um the well i'd already worked in account management in an adjacent industry i'd worked in mechanical and electrical engineering distribution working with large you know, national and uh, international uh, contracting organizations. Um, moved into the IT sector, if I'm honest with you, because it paid more money at that stage. Um, and started off as an early career account manager, working hard, you know, doing more cold calling than, than account management. And then gradually, you know, you build a base, then you start to do, you know, maybe 80% account management, 20% new business. And um, worked in, you know, a couple of organizations, joined CCS Media and CCS Media was very much following the, the trend of evolving into a, a real technology company at the time or, or trying to get into a, you know, become a hardware company really at that point and just essentially, you know, started from there and become really enthused with, with how I could progress and, and see a future for myself and, and my family. And were you interested in technology? Was it, were you like a techie? Were you interested in learning about it? No, not, not initially. Um, it was just about, you know, selling and selling as much as I could. But after, after a period of time, probably more software I, I started to get into. Um, and, and then you start to see the, the you know, the positive impact and the, this positive possibility really that, that that's enabled by, by technology and technology innovation. And that's just, I find that really engaging and you know I'm really enthusiastic about the the good that people can do with technology. You know if you look at you know what I've managed through essentially from being management um, in the business, you know 2008, the financial crisis, uh, Brexit, COVID, you know IT across our industry but you know across the broader economy has always played a positive part in the solution to to overcoming yeah. challenges that organizations have had but um technology be my, my my second passion first passion definitely people i find people just endlessly interesting and fascinating and so what attracted you to ccs media because you'd obviously had some success in this other adjacent industry why why ccs media what what, what was it about them you, you thought was going to be a good move uh well my friend got me the job um and we worked really well together and um we we were kind of I wouldn't say joined at the hip, but we, you know, we enjoyed working together. We were interested in earning more money, and being honest, CCS Media paid more money than than anybody else at the time. And um, they, you could also see that they were starting to evolve into this journey of trying to become uh, a technology business, whereas most of the organisations in the area that we're from, um, we, we we're from Bradford, um, but so Leeds, Bradford, Wakefield area were all sort of more traditional print uh, computer consumables businesses yeah. and um, we, we were interested in moving into more of a technology focused role. So this Bradford boy that joined CCS Media, what yeah. was his ambitions when he joined the company? Did you, you know, did you think you'd end up as MD? 
No, uh, I probably wasn't thinking about you know being an MD. Um, I was thinking about earning as much money as fast as I could and as sustainably as I could. Um, definitely had it in my mind that that I could build something, whether it was at CCS Media or or not. Um, and you know, did I think I'd still be here? You know, all these years later, at that point, you know, month one, probably not. But I was definitely open to that, and. The, the benefit of working at CCS Media was really high on entrepreneurial spirit and low on ego. So it wasn't about controlling people and, and just, you know, you have to stay in your place forever. They were open. They were, it was a business and you could sense it. It was a business that wanted to grow. It wanted to grow and it was humble enough to say that it wasn't getting everything right. Mm. So, so that led to opportunities. I remember having a conversation with... Um, my, my manager at the time, director now in the company, a guy called Rob Omar, and, you know, talking about, you know, I want to build something. I want to work with people. I can build something. And, you know, being quite confident about that. And he, he kind of pushed back at first. And then, you, you know, you come back and you say, no, I'm definitely interested in this. I still want to go. And I built my business up now and my, my account base so it's sustainable to support something that we could do. And the business was welcoming of, welcoming of that. And... We, we set up a business then in, in Manchester, which was a new you know geography for, for the company. There was me and three other people, new recruits. We didn't know what we were doing, working hard, <laughs> and um, all four of us are still at the company now. Wow. And when you started, it was 36 million. Yeah. Turnover now? Um, we should finish on about 250 this year. So what do you think is the sort of secret to the success of that growth? Because you've been instrumental in it. You've obviously got to the top of the tree now. But, you know, that's, that's, that's good growth. That's 36 yeah. to 250 million. But what's the secret? A um, couple of layers to, to answering that. Um, growth technology sectors, growth customer market sectors. Um, the, you know, the evolution of technology and how technology is being procured inside businesses has grown significantly. Um, our ability to be able to provide that technology has grown enormously. You know, we, when I joined the company, we were largely a, a backup media distributor, consumables reseller, and did a little bit of reactive hardware. Now we're, you know, we're a technology business. Um, people, you know, the two mix, I and mean, when you can get the two to mix and and align, and and you have focused people in the business aligned with the company with growth technology sectors, growth segments, it's kind of, it helps you scale and, you know, we've grown the business organically. There's no acquisitions in there from, mm. from the part of, you know, me being in the company anyway. Um, and again, that entrepreneurial spirit, you know, we, we built a business in Manchester. I had the autonomy then to go do that. I went and did it five times. And then after I'd done that in the sales organization, just completely building startups inside a business, which was great, unbelievable got the opportunity to go build the commercial technology business for the company um, and then freedom to, to build the academies and now all of those businesses are being run by by different people and being taken on to you know, much higher levels and successful levels than, than I'd got them to. But um, just again, entrepreneurial spirit and, and, and a lot of action. Let's talk about the academies for a minute because you've got a, a relatively well-established academy now, haven't you? It's been going for like, how long, four or five years? About four years. Yeah, yeah, four years. So where you recruit and train and nurture young talent apprentices from all different backgrounds, um, which is hopefully alleviating some of the talent shortages because there's no talent about, but you're actually creating your own talent internally. So for anyone interested in joining the academy, you know, what can they do? How are they, is it just approaching? Has you got a partner or how does it work? Just approach. You know, the, the reason we, we started the academy, we were... I wouldn't say biased. We, we we were we were exclusively only recruiting industry experienced people, and um, there's only a, a finite amount of people in the industry that are going to be either available for work or suitable for your organisation, and um, you know that's a challenge. And also the technology skills that we had in the business, we wanted to start from fresh. Mm. So we, we we started the academies to to build the next generation within our company. They, you know th those guys now account for. You know, ten percent of our our revenues um, as, as a program, which is great. Um, it's been great for helping new people, and I believe strongly in this. Helping new people come into our industry that you may not have ever found in our industry, you know, ten years ago, or you know, five years ago, or even now into some companies. 
you know, uh, they're not necessarily, you know, from the highest uh, universities or the best backgrounds. That they, they come in, uh, you know, we do lots of, you know, activities about recruiting people, and you know, people get in touch with our recruitment teams on uh, via, via the website, and we go to, you know, varying different events for either apprentices and and so on. Um, and all somebody has to turn up with is a will to want to learn, yeah. a will to want to take action and, and improve. And and the, the rest, we have multiple layers of management and a, a management team that work with these people and help nurture nurture their, their, their talent, the talent that they already have and their enthusiasm to get on in life. That's all they need, you know, and, and, and a determination. And, you know, everything else is, is kind of, on the table, whatever we can do, we, we make it work. And, um, you know, we, we've got a, a core of, um, we've only got managed to get, I think 37 people will start next next week. But if you look at that, that cohort, 56% minority backgrounds, that's not like our industry. And no. that's what those academies are like as well. So it's about, it's about giving people, anybody, regardless of gender or background or, you know, ethnicity, uh, an opportunity if you want to get on in life come and work in IT and have a go and we'll make it work with you so you've proven it's possible to grow uh, right to the top of a company working for the same company so what advice would you give someone looking to carve out their own career um, in the IT space or you know giving advice to one of your own apprentices who just joins well be, be very committed on what you want to do um, but be dedicated to what you want to do. Uh, make sure it's always clear to, you know, your management and their managers. So your manager and your manager's manager, um, in, in a way that's, you know, appreciative of, of where you are now. And you're not always going to get yes. So you know you can't come to a conversation and say, well, actually, I, you know, I've started CCS Media. I'm, you know, three months in, and you know, I want to be the MD. Well, you might want to be, but but you've got some dedication and, and some work to do until you're going to get to that point. And you know anybody can make the statement that they want to be the MD or the CEO or or, or whatever. Um, and, and let the numbers, let your work ethic do the talking. Don't get distracted by politics. Don't get distracted by you know big dreams without action. And and stay humble, right? And work hard. That's that's the biggest thing. And and you've got to you've got to be patient. And be comfortable being frustrated because it's never going to be fast enough. Mm. But you've got to you've got to keep at it. You've got to keep at it. And uh, I remember one guy, you know, and said to me, one of the owners of the company said, "You you not really had enough failure. You know, we need you. We need you haven't had enough failure. Yeah, yeah, we need we need to parachute you into a couple of parts of the business that are maybe not doing so well and see how you react. And you know, just every, everything's a lesson. Everything's a lesson. And and pick a set of good mentors. Um, I'm I'm really lucky that I've I've had mentors in the business. I've had mentors in customers, in in suppliers, in manufacturers, in in competitors, right? You know, direct competitors that are, that have been open for me to phone them up and say, I'm not sure about this, and you know, what do you feel about this? Or can, can you can you can you give me your perspective? Seek out perspective everywhere, um, and be humble enough to be able to say I don't know. So, what would you say, James? Is your biggest career highlight or achievement to date for you what, what are you most proud of too young to to be thinking about you're not you're not too young. <laughs> you're definitely not too young to think about it <laughs> at, at 24 <laughs> um, there must be something you're you know is it navigating through covid what, what are you most proud of so far so so a couple of points um i remember so so I don't like reflecting too much because I think it it kind of makes you feel like you're a bit you know complacent or, or, or satisfied. I'm definitely not satisfied with, with where we are uh, or where I am. The um, I I, rem I remember when we set up the Manchester business. I remember there was a part there when we'd set up this Manchester business and, and we'd navigated 2008, the financial crisis, and feeling yeah okay we're part of something here. This this little team. You know, we're, we're building something. It's amazing. And I was in that office a couple of weeks ago, and um, there was a there was a newspaper cl clip from you know the Manchester Evening News, and where we'd done a million pounds within the first six months of trading from a startup. Wow. And uh, you know, you read that, and that 
that makes me feel, you know, you know, reflective and, and kind of go, yeah, okay, that, that, that was a fantastic time. Um, in terms of kind of jobs and things like that, you know, you feel like it's going to be a big thing at the time, but the reality is all you're doing is giving yourself a platform to achieve something, you know. So what, you're the MD. Do something with that job title. Do something with that opportunity, you know. But do something with the, the foundation that you've already, you know, built now. Yeah. Um, don't get reflective or, or feel like you've achieved something. I think I think the company, not necessarily just me, I think I think the company as a whole has navigated the COVID pandemic with astonishing success. The way that they've, you know, looked out for one another, cared for one another, um, being real and, and, and being honest, being authentic. Without that, just being words, right? Being real with people. Mm. Um, I, th I think that'd be a, a, big, a big point that we'll probably look back on and, and say, actually on reflection, we, we did okay there, but where we are now, I'm just saying, don't get complacent, keep going, keep running forward. Now, CCS Media have been nominated for no less than eight best companies to work for in 2021. How important are these awards internally for your staff, but also driving up standards of, of across the industry and your own company? I th well, I think the process, so, so we, we, we got the awards, um, but the biggest positive really was going through the journey. So, so we already decided that we wanted to go through the journey and start to look and have kind of a litmus test on our company and kind of get an external view um, of, of where we are. You know, you kind of know you, you, know, you do things well, but you, you want to do them better. So you, you want somebody to call the baby ugly, right? With, yeah. with, without any, any bias to the, towards the company. And um, we went through the process. First time I've ever done something like this before in my life. And you know, it does ask you questions uh, that you actually go, mm, yeah, okay, yeah, I think we could improve there. And, and we definitely took some learnings from it. And um, it's a cycle that we'll continue to, to go through. The awards and just kind of going for awards for awards sake doesn't entertain me, doesn't entertain the business at all. It's about doing the right things for, for people. Um, and, and listen, we got eight awards out of it at the end and, and that's fantastic, but it's just a byproduct. The, 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 the best thing was um, getting the feedback from our people, you know, we're completely uh, unanimous, which, and, and this was the big purpose to, to give us a framework that we were constantly on this cycle of improving the business inside out. It's yeah. really important that, you know, there's a, it's easy to put a nice veneer around a company and, you know, say we're amazing, you know, we're a Ferrari, but really you're a Fiesta. You know, a Fiesta engine. You, you, you want to build from the inside out. And that's that's the whole purpose. On that point, then, how important is the CCS Media brand for you? And what I mean by that is, you know, when I when I speak to candidates and companies before, they've obviously seen the success and they've seen the growth, etc. But they maybe sort of think, oh, is it uh, is it tin shifting the words and all that sort of stuff. Does that bother you, the actual, the, the perception on, or on the brand? Or is, do you, does that give you sort of sleepless nights or, or you do not worry about that? Because I, I know that recently, you know, you've been doing, you've got the Dell um, Services Award. You've been doing a lot of work internally. You know, when I speak to you yourself, there's the stuff that, a lot of stuff that you're doing, not like the Academy, but maybe it's a security division or all the stuff that you're doing that isn't maybe not public. Yeah. Does that bother you, that brand, that brand image? Yes. The, the, the challenge is um, a lot of the time we're, we're just getting on and building a business. We're getting on and building a great business for, for our customers, people, and our people. And what, what I'd suggest we do forget sometimes is you can't sell a secret, right? And, yeah. and, and, and not intentionally, we keep that a secret, right? Because we, we're too busy doing. Um, and that's that's definitely a reflection you know you, you've you've asked me that point you know a few times you've raised it and um you know when we've spoken in the past and mm. and it, it's, it's definitely an area that we need to improve on there'll, there'll always be a lag of, of of perceived value that a company has versus you know where we are now um because because that takes a time you know a, a relative amount of time to materialize and and again there's a couple of points in there as well that probably speak to the dna and and the, the values of the company. We're biased about action. We're terrified of complacency. We, we 
terrified around you know just just staying where we are now and not looking forward and um sometimes we we need to definitely do a better job at articulating out to the world that you know you mentioned that the services business right we've got we've, we've got a great services business internal services as well as partner services you mentioned partner services with dell where we deliver in-house services you know services six percent of profitability in q2 um that's that's a decent amount of money um and not many people i don't think not many people know about that and that's pure services delivered by our business by the way not not part of services that's only delivered by somebody that's on ccs media's payroll and um and then obviously there's a partner services business that extends out beyond that the you know what we've done in the in the last sort of 24 months where we're a multiple cloud platform aggregator for our customers we've got you know, thousands of seats of cloud and, and different cloud iterations around public cloud infrastructure as well. I've got cyber security, you know, cloud architects in the organization. There's lots, lots going on. But again, we, we, we kind of run the business a little bit in, in startup mode all the time. Yeah. Um, and again, I don't know if this is a character trait where we're just, we're just always, we're, we're always building, 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 building. And, you know, we, we, we're never satisfied. Um, but we we do need to do a better job. I need to do a better job at articulating, you know, what we're doing um, to to the broader, um, you know, community inside it. I don't think we did a great job until maybe two years ago doing it to our own company. If I'm honest with you, really. Um, and I think I think one of the big takeaways from the pandemic and agile working and teams. You know, we don't have we have people working anywhere now. We communicate directly with our people more than we've ever done. Um, Which is great. Starting 24 months ago, so you know that that'd be the one tick actually. You know, when you, you say you know you don't want to be complacent, but you want to recognise things. The communication that we've got, two-way communication, intimate communication with people, is has been better in the last 24 months than it's ever been. Enabled by technology again. Fantastic. One of the things I wanted to do with the podcast um, and this series is talking about recruitment and hiring trends and sort of giving advice to sort of general listeners around how they can get back into work. So I want to ask you a few questions around your hiring and your your preferred methods. You know, when you interview, James, how can a candidate really impress you? What what do they have to do to sort of get on your good books? Interview me. Really? Yeah, d- 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 I, I think it's a strange notion that when someone comes to an interview, there's this kind of power dynamic where, you know, I'm having to sell myself to, to the company um, so, you know, this company, you know, I'm suddenly going to be worthy or they're going to deem me to be worthy. Um, the, the candidate should be, should be asking questions around, you know, if I'm going to enter this joint venture, employment's a joint venture between you and the company, and we're going to align, uh, will I have the capability to, you know, be a good employee and achieve the goals that I want to achieve, my personal goals? while also achieving success for the company and i think i think that's really important for, for somebody um if i'm interviewing personally you know that that's what i'm looking for what about what's your favorite interview question whether you've been given it or or you you ask why would you want to work at ccs media i don't I want, i'm in recruitment <laughs> sorry you want to work at CCS media. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that, is that your favorite genuinely, question? You just, just ask why they want to work just, there. Just genuinely, I'm I'm interested, interested. In, I'm interested in why why would anybody want to work at CCS Media, and you know, get beyond the fluff, and and again, do you probe? Because if they said, look, you 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 mentioned when you first started. I just wanted to earn more money. It's a good industry. If someone just says that, is that a good enough answer? Yeah, but I'm going to ask why and what they're wanting to achieve, right. and and why why do they think that CCS Media is going to be a, ve- a vehicle that's going to allow them to do that? And if if that person said, actually, well, you know, I want to, I want this to be a get rich quick scheme, and I want to be in and out in six months, I'm going to say, you know, go work down the road, right? Yeah. Uh, and they'll sell you a dream and, and and employ you for a while. You know, a big statement that I make to anybody, regardless of where you work in in the business we want you to be in 10 years time you know asking someone to look beyond 10 years is is, is too much right but but if you can think about 10 years being aligned to somebody for 10 years or 10 year cycles you, know, you can do a lot of good in 10 years and again goes back to the point about being interested in caring about people in any organization working with people working together 
you can achieve a lot of good and you can do a lot of great things. It takes time though. And and, yeah. and, and the, the probing point is around, you know, what do you want to achieve? And can I help this person achieve that? And if I can, the business benefits. All we have to do is, you know, as resellers is help our customers be successful and help our people be successful. If our people are successful, you know, as long as I've not got a terrible accountant, the business the is going to look, look after, after itself. itself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's the best question a candidate's ever asked you? Can't think of one, sorry. Okay, we'll move on. <laughs> okay, what is the funniest thing that's happened to you in, in uh, as a candidate or a hiring manager during an interview? You got a funny story? No, I'm too serious for funny. Um, <laughs> Let me let me stink. Uh, la laughing at myself a little bit. When if I go back to the 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 business that we opened in Manchester, there's four of us. So I've recruited three people. Um, it's going great. A couple of weeks in, I've cracked this. This is easy. Hiring's easy. Yeah, easy. <laughs> so so I, I meet someone applies for a role from a different reseller in uh, Manchester at the time. They, they'd folded, and uh, comes into the interview is yeah I can do this I can do that and you know and I'm green just going yeah yeah this is amazing you're buying it yeah I'm buying everything buying everything so I go back into the office right guys we've got we've got a new team member this is going to be fantastic <laughs> wow so the guy starts a week later that should have been an alarm bell anyway right he starts a week later it's like you know sent somebody else this guy so I'm listening <laughs> to this guy we're in a small room it's about the size of this right you know <laughs> Big building, mirrored building, it looked fantastic. You know, but we were in this little box room. And, and so this guy's in, in earshot of me and um, I'm listening. I'm thinking this guy, this guy doesn't know. So so, and I'm laughing at myself here because my, my own weakness on not asking the right questions, not being slow, not asking why CCS media and how it could work. Um, you know, just saying yes and, and being led. Um, gave me the, the benefit of making that mistake really early and having to fire someone within two weeks of setting up my, my first business. And wow. um, that was horrible, but get it out of the way quick. Yeah, fine. What's the biggest turn off when you meet someone for an interview? Is there anything that, you know, if they meet James, you shouldn't be doing? Uh, sort of my bias, uh, timekeeping. So if somebody comes in, you know, 15, 20 minutes late, with, you know, without a real re reason or calling before or, or messing around on a phone, it's, it's just a pet hate. Yeah. Is that why you turn up hour, hour and 20 minutes early today? Tardiness should not be an option, that, that James, exactly should it? it yeah. <laughs> um, for people out there who are applying for roles, you know, they're sending CVs to hiring managers and you've got loads of hiring managers throughout the UK. How do you think the hiring managers should decide to who to interview? Is it just based on the CV or is it, should it be more than that? Speak to everybody. Speak to everybody. Um, I, I, I don't think a CV does somebody justice. I don't think a CV does somebody justice. And especially if it's somebody early career, there's not a CV there. Yeah. And, and, and you need to... It's not just about qualifications either, you know, if someone's got an MBA or whatever, you know, it, it, it's about people fit, people alignment. Again, we're going to enter a joint venture, yeah. joint venture. So joint venture is employment and um, you, you need to speak to everybody and get, get a bit of a, you know, the measure of them. How important do you think the CV is or do you, you know, like, what about a covering letter? How do you think, would you read a covering letter if it was a senior role? Do, do, does that? Yeah. 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 If, if somebody... Do you think that's important? If, if, if somebody puts the, the effort in, I'm going to read the covering letter. And the reason I'm going to read the covering letter um, and the reason I'd, I'd, I'd probably encourage somebody to put a covering letter together would be if you want to articulate the points that the, the job description that you've had in the past doesn't. So you want to, you want to give me a bit of you. Right. There's no right? chance to sell yeah. themselves a bit. Sell themselves. Um, what I would say about senior roles, it's very rare that you get a CV across your desk for for a, a very very senior candidate. They normally just phone you up and say, "I already know you." Do you get that a lot? People ringing Sometimes, you. Sometimes, yeah. 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 They'll just ring you up and say, "James, I'm I'm in the market. Yeah. Can we have a chat?" Yeah. Can we have a chat? Or can you give me a little bit of advice? You know, where where do you, where do you think would be more suitable? Um, cause, you know, our business is not going to be suitable for everybody. Like same for every every company. If I worked for you, James, 
how would I get recognised for promotion? Because you mentioned about earlier about hard work and, and, and being dedicated, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if um, I really want to get recognised by yourself, how would you how do you recognise talent in your own company? Where you think actually that that guy, that girl there, they'll be a good manager, or etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. How do you sort of look for promotions and little stars, rising stars in your own company? Numbers set everybody free. Right. So don't run the company by opinion. Run it by numbers. So so for the numbers are speaking and. And, and and you know that that attracts you to to pockets of the business that are doing well. Um, as, as you're looking at those pockets of business that are doing well, um, you make sure that you know everybody has that that framework and that that environment to be able to to talk about what they want to achieve in the next you know six twelve months time. Um, a lot of our management have have developed through the business just like me. You know if you look at the senior management. Um, Pretty much all of the senior management have all developed through the business. Really? Yeah, the, you know we've we've not hired out you know at senior level to, to bring new people in. Um, brought some mid management in and they've progressed up as well. Um, but but by and large you know people have progressed through the business. So it's about working with people, staying close, being open, not being close to to a close group of people. And you know the point I made earlier around you know always seeking perspective. When you're traveling around either digitally, you know, for agile work or into offices, making sure that you're always open to perspectives and people's feedback. And, and people tend to, you know, when they want to get on in life, they, they tend to let you know. James, if someone wants to impress you as, as the MD, so they've joined the organization, they want to be recognized, they want to impress you. How do you spot talent in your own company? You might think, actually, that person might make a good manager or they might make a good specialist. How do you spot talent in your own organization? Well, uh, pay attention to the data uh, for everybody across the business and the teams. Um, data sets everybody free. You know, we don't want to be running the business based on, on opinion, any company on opinion. Um, but then making sure that you put yourself in a position where, you know, you, you're actively engaging in this two-way communication with teams, with people, um, to get feedback. And, you know, when somebody wants to progress in a company or are interested in some, they will lead the conversation. You know, the conversation will always be geared around that. And we encourage people in the in the company not to be slow at coming forward around areas that they're interested in. Exactly, you know, same as me when I was, you know, building businesses inside the company. So being open to suggestion, being open to people uh, and their ideas, but also making sure that there's a validation on the data. Um, you know, it's not just an idea. It's it's actually you can see that someone's continuously being successful or improving um, and, and then making sure that you support them to, to grow. And my last question, you've obviously been there a long time, you started as a salesperson, you've moved your way up. What do you do differently now as the MD? So give me an, a sort of a flavour of your working week. Are you dealing with customers? Are you dealing with operations or accounts? What are you doing? A little bit of everything really. You know, there's, you know, working on this emergent strategy all the time of the company operational with the management teams you know we, we catch up every single week um, multiple times in a week in, in some parts of the business um, operational in terms of working with a select number of customers um, over a period of time making sure I'm getting feedback from customers making sure that I'm, I'm you know sanity checking some of the ways that we're investing in technology for them getting feedback on service um, making sure that you know for, for me I'm, I'm getting feedback from manufacturers working with the, the you know the technology teams, spend a, a big amount of my time asking lots and lots of questions to technology people or people outside of the organization where I'm trying to learn about technology that we're evolving into. And then also, you know, making sure that I'm I'm relevant and working with on some of those projects with the team hands on without interfering or, you know, without stifling their their ability to, to grow the company. And I've actually got one more question Go on. as I was thinking about it. As you've now navigated CCS Media through the pandemic and we've come out and you, CCS Media is doing very well this year, etc. Most companies are doing really well. What's the, the sort of plan, the goals that you've got for the company over the next coming sort of 12 months? Is there anything you're, you're trying to achieve? Uh, just continue to invest in the company, um, you know, invest in the growth areas, the business. We're investing in, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, multi-cloud uh, aggregation and the platform aggregation. Um, our security business, how we're evolving, you know, and having our security architects enable our customers. I'm not saying that's going to become a disproportionate part of our business, but it's a, a pocket of the business that's growing. 
um, while simultaneously investing in all parts of the business that are growing. So, you know, continue to work with people, continue to invest in people, continue to invest in technology areas, and continue to be just common sense. You're That's never it. happy, James. Though. You're always pushing forward. <laughs> James, you've been a great guest. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Mark. Cheers. Cheers.